So the first question that we often get uh, when we talk about roots is what is a high quality root system? And you know, this is always a bit challenging for everyone to answer that's in this field of research because there actually is no you know, hard and fast rules around what makes a good root system and what makes a bad root system, although we are really starting to define those features a little bit more. But there is no agreed upon uh, definition of a high quality root system. That being said, there is uh, a lot of research in the last few years, especially last couple decades, on the kinds of features that we would try to look for um, when trying to grow high quality root systems in nursery situations. So I've kind of outlined here um, a few of those key features and some of the photos today uh, are courtesy of Dr. Gilman, who certainly is a root expert that we like to talk to a lot about uh, when we're doing uh, different kinds of root research. So one of the first things uh, that Dr. Gilman and other researchers have looked at is lateral roots that are at right angles that are close to the soil surface. So I've kind of added an animation there and you can see this is the kind of thing that we're looking for uh, when we have those coarse structural roots emerging from the stem or the trunk of the tree. So we're looking for lateral roots that have a close to right angles if possible. We're also looking for structural roots that are roots, uh, emerging and facing outward away from the trunk. And sometimes people talk about this being sort of like the rays of the sun. Uh, but in nature, this happens uh, without um, the sort of restrictions that we have in container nursery systems. So this is worth noting that we look for structural roots that are radially oriented around the trunk. We also want uh, many small diameter roots throughout the root ball. So the fibrous root system or the fine root system is critically important for feeding the tree. So when we think about moving from the container system into the field, ensuring that there is adequate or sufficient uh, fine roots is really important for that tree becoming established in that um, soil that it's being planted into. So when you're assessing root quality from nursery stock, you wanna be looking for uh, sort of this density of fine roots, fibrous roots that the tree has. This will vary species by species. So not all species will make the same amount of fibrous roots. That being said, there are production techniques that can help to increase this. And that's something we'll talk about today. Another thing we look for in high quality root systems is having few roots on the outside of the root ball. So as you can see in this image from Dr. Gilman here, we have lots of roots that uh, originate at the, you know, the center of the root ball and emerge out to the exterior of the root ball. But we don't have a lot of roots that are sort of long, lanky roots that just collect on the exterior of the root ball. The root ball density is very high in this photo, and that's something uh, that we look for when we think about uh, root quality. And sort of part and parcel with this, we also think about misdirected roots. So roots that come out of container systems that are no longer radiating um, straight out from the trunk, those are considered uh, to be root defects or misdirected roots. And those defects are really important to think about because those defects can be persistent and sustained throughout the production cycle and throughout the life of the tree if we're not careful and we don't think about it. So that's really what we want to talk about. And I like to add this in here because I've been to a lot of uh, Dr. Gilman's workshops and he gives a lot of them to nursery producers and he makes you repeat this mantra uh, throughout the workshops. And I won't make everyone do that today, but as a simple rule, when you're, when you're assessing nursery stock quality, he gets people to think about having straight roots, some at the surface. So you want to have those coarse structural roots close to the soil surface and you want them to be straight. So those are just some easy key features to be looking for. So why do we care about you can hear manage quality later on by pruning or doing other things, why do we care start? And the reason for that is because the main Structures of trees develop within trees that you're working with. So this is critically important because if a defect forms in those coarse structural roots and it's not corrected, it will be sustained in the next stage of production. So whether that is upsizing into a different nursery stock container 
or heading into the field, if it's not corrected, those coarse structural roots uh, will be persistent. And there's uh, a significant amount of research now that is showing this at different stages of nursery stock uh, sizes. But what our research group has really been looking at is those very early stages of propagation, particularly uh, right out of uh, seedling germination. And what we have found is, in fact, that the container defects or the imprints that happen at the propagation stage can be sustained and can be critically important for the health and establishment of that tree in perpetuity. So on the left here, you can see this is straight out of a propagation liner, probably something that has a closed wall. And what you can see is the coarse structural roots that have already formed in this early, early stage of production um, are directed downward, sort of at an oblique angle. And along the wall, this is what I was talking about, where you don't want roots on the exterior of the ball necessarily. Um, those roots already have downward defect, deflected roots. So this is, you know, super, super early in production, probably just a couple months or even a few weeks. And then your pot, so obviously Florida, he's out of Florida, so things grow a lot faster than they grow here. But you can already see what um, we call the container imprint or the cage effect that happens from that original propagation liner. So all of those uh, structural roots that we could see uh, forming in the original photo on the left are now downward directed and they're much, much bigger. So the root tips from this uh, nursery liner are probably uh, terminating at the base of the container, or in some cases, we now have additional root defects like ascending roots. So these are fun ones that grow up the container wall. We can see that one here. And we can also see some kinked roots here where you have roots that have come down and they've been deflected and grown off into another direction. So when we think about the way that roots explore soil after transplanting and where the good quality soil is in most fields, these roots are all going to be terminating at sort of the porous point of the soil in a lot of uh, different urban and agricultural fields to be helping to be that, at that sort of place where we don't have topsoil happening anymore. So today we're going to talk uh, a little bit about root development and propagation in sort of two different kinds of systems. And I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview on it now, and then Jason will talk about it in section two uh, with, with respect to the apple seedling pilot that we got, we've been conducting with the apple team at Vineland. Um, and what we wanted to sort of demonstrate here is just the different setup that roots will experience in a closed walled versus an open walled propagation tray. So on the left, we have what would be, you know, fairly conventional in terms of propagation trays uh, and the way that liners are grown. And we have basically 100% closure on the walls. So no, no exposure to air um, on the, the sort of the sides of the wall where the substrate interface would be. The only opening will be at the drainage hole. And then on the right, we have the root smart system, uh, which is 95% open. And the only contact is at the ring at the base that holds the elipod. So you can see the ring there and a prototype of the ring as we were uh, designing the tray itself. And that was purposeful to ensure that minimal contact between the substrate interface uh, and plastic have occurred in the design because wherever there are uh, contact points between plastic and substrate become opportunities for those misdirected roots. So just a little bit about uh, the difference between how root development happens in solid walled liners versus in air pruning liners. I'll sort of walk you through each scenario. So in a solid walled liner, when a seed is, is germinating, a tap root will continue to grow until it hits an area that is not well suited to grow. So in nature, a physical barrier like a hard pan could be that sort of interface where all of a sudden the taproot hits it and it sends a signal and says, okay, there's something that's obstructing or has changed here. And then this signals to the plant that it needs to come up with another strategy. In containers, what we have is that change in environment. That's what we can play with uh, when we're growing in these artificial systems. And typically uh, in these solid walled containers, that change in ingredient is really just at the drainage hole. So what will happen is you'll have this 
uh, taproot that grows down and eventually it hits this air exposure at the base of the container. And then hormones signal the root to stop, stop growing. And then eventually, or what actually happens is the hormones convert that environmental stimulus into a physiological or an anatomical response. And so what we end up having is where that taproot is aborted, the oxygen conditions increase in the surrounding tissue and it, the tree responds by generating adventitious root growth. So in a lot of aggressively taprooting species, if you sort of have a bullseye where this taproot will grow down and it'll hit that air uh, dead on at the base of the container, then you will have a little bit of root branching or adventitious root growth happening here at the base of the container. So this is what we typically see in these solid walled containers. It's hit the air, you have some branching there where roots are looking, exploring for new conditions. And this is an example of a poplar liner that we had grown. And you can see um, this was grown in a solid walled container and you can see where there was air at the base and the, and the tap or the tap root that came down branched. And then you do have some uh, additional sort of root growth branching happening part of the way up, but not much past uh, sort of that area where the adventitious root growth happened. And this is just another close the example where you can see that happening in practice. So in air pruning containers, uh, the tap root similarly will continue to grow until it hits an area that isn't well suited to growth. But what happens in a system like RootSmart, where we have 95% uh, air exposure on the substrate interface, we have the tap root grow down and it will hit that uh, base of the container, similarly to the solid walled container where we have an air uh, air hole opening. And the hormone will again signal uh, the halt of that tap root. The oxygen concentrations will also increase in the surrounding tissue and it will respond by generating that adventitious root growth. But the difference is that we have air exposure all the way up both sides of the container or on the entire uh, surface area of the, of the cell itself. So it, the oxygen conditions once again, once they've sort of uh, generated that adventitious root growth here at the base, this continues to happen. So now uh, in the tissue surrounding that last uh, burst of growth, there is more additional root growth that continues to happen up the entire sort of walls of that container because each time the roots grow out and they hit that air interface, they realize that there is that change in environmental gradient and that signaling continues to happen um, for the entire sort of length or height of that uh, container cell. So this is an example of a tree coming out of the root smart system where you can see that the tap root was aborted and there was root branching that happened at the base of the container right here. But what you can also see is that you have that sort of laddering effect or the skeleton, uh, fish skeleton effect that they talk about in the forestry literature where you have the, the roots that continuously form uh, root branches all the way up the sides of the container. So instead of there just being uh, root growth at the base where that, or that branching happened in the solid walled container, we continuously have roots that explore to the edge of the container and continue to branch all the way up to the top. And this is just an example as well. So in summary, um, when you look at containers or propagation trays that are out uh, conventionally, the bulk of them will be 80% plastic and roughly 20% or less uh, air pruning. And, and the majority of them will just have drainage holes. And some container uh, producers will actually claim that those are air pruning holes, but the reality are they are drainage holes. And yes, you do get some... Um, root pruning happening there. And is that growers really be thinking about the inverse relationship of plastic and air, because if you want to promote uh, that continuous air pruning, you need to have it not just at the base or even strategically placed holes all over the container. You really need to promote um, the maximum amount of air, air to uh, substrate ratio possible. So RootSmart is roughly 95% air pruning and 5% contact with elipods. And that's why we see the effects that we see with the container, which uh, Jason will walk you through really shortly. 
And we just have been talking to a lot of growers about this, not just in propagation trays, but really thinking about um, moving beyond the drainage hole air pruning concept and thinking about the entirety of the root ball as you are looking for different containers that are on the commercial market. So up next in section two, uh, Jason is going to talk about the apple seedling pilot and present some early findings uh, from the apple seedlings that were grown in conventional closed wall trays and the air pruning trays uh, in the RootSmart tray.